to the Remax Real Estate Insight Show. I'm your host, Jeanette Schneider. You know, moving is widely recognized as one of life's more stressful events. And if you have moved at any point in your life, you're probably nodding your head yes right now as you think back to your most recent move. And if that wasn't enough, we are right now in the busiest moving week of the year. According to a moving labor report, 80% of all moves happen between April and September. And by their calendar, this week in particular is labeled as, get this, pandemonium. So joining me to talk about what everybody needs to know to make your move smoother is Lauren Durezzi. She's an associate with Remax Encore in Clarkston. Welcome to the show, Lauren. Thank you. So here we are. Let's say we've got folks listening. They found their new home. It's time to start packing up all of those belongings, get ready to make the new memories at the new home. But before you get there, You need to pack some stuff up. What's the first step that you recommend folks can do to prepare for moving day? It's definitely called the purge. And people dread this, whether they're moving or not. But (laughs) the uh, the purge is very important to moving in general. You want to make sure that you know exactly what you want to keep, what you want to toss, what you want to donate, and also what you would like to sell, hopefully, before the move. Um, Keep in mind that every little itty-bitty item in your house needs to move with you. So if you can alleviate some of that before the move, it definitely makes the move less stressful. No, it really really does. And like I think... The, the word purge itself, it's, it's not to me a friendly word. It sounds no. like there's going right. to be work involved with it. But like you had mentioned, keep, toss, donate, sell. That's kind of a popular mantra t- these days, isn't it, when it absolutely. comes to house organization? Yes, absolutely. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I agree with you. When you do, if you if you do kind of kind of take the the blinders off and you look around your home and you're looking at, like you said, every little thing mm-hmm. that needs to get moved. I know often we've told folks when they're preparing to sell the house, clean, purge, you know, go through declutter. So if they've done that once, though, it, they probably can afford to do it again, right? Absolutely. And it, it definitely makes it easier for the whole selling process. If you, if you know you want to move even within the next year or so, mm-hmm. start that purge, start looking at what you want to donate, what you want to keep, what you know for sure you want to keep. And maybe there's that that maybe pile that you have as well that, you know, I'll get back to that again before, you know, closer to I the I call move. it the guilt pile. Is yes. I know I should get rid yes. of it, but there's something that has me kind of holding, holding back. Yes. So, all right, let's say that folks have done a good job of, of purging, whether once or twice through this process mm-hmm. to get them to this point. For the move itself, what's the best way to box up some items? Because, I mean, once you've done the purge, now you really actually have to start putting stuff in things. The logistics start to come in. So, absolutely. Um, when it comes to moving, the all the individual items plus the boxed items, you want to have some type of system. And a system that I have found that works very well is color coding. Okay. So uh, whether it's yourself and your family that are moving these items or it's a moving company, we as people are more visual than anything. So to have those colors come into play makes a big difference for the family and the movers and any other helpers that you have that are helping you with the move. Um, I recommend the kitchen be the brightest color because that is usually where the most boxes go um, is in the kitchen. So the more people you have helping, the more they know, okay, the kitchen's yellow. Cool. I see the yellow cool. label. We can throw that in there. Well, and the kitchen does have a lot of utensils and yes. things, and, and so it makes sense. Utensil and and I'm, I'm chuckling with the color coding, because <laughs> I'm a fan of that. I mean, back when you had a lot of files in a file yes. cabinet, I color coded. My calendar oh, is still yes. color coded. So I, I'm with you that mm-hmm. From a visual perspective, makes a big difference. It certainly, certainly works. So let me ask you this: you know, maybe the first move in life, you get some friends mm-hmm. and you pay them with pizza and beer, yes. and that that works for a move, right? Yes, it does. The older we get, that doesn't usually work so well anymore. <laughs> and the house gets bigger, and you have more things. Um, at what point should folks really consider a moving company versus do it yourself? And this is, you know, obviously this is this is a per basis answer, but generally speaking, if you've got a thousand square feet apartment or something less than that, usually you can you can t- tackle that with your friends and family and some pizza and beer. It also depends on how valuable your time is to you. If you are, if, even if you have a small amount, you can still hire a moving company to have a smaller truck to help you. But I definitely recommend a moving company when you have more than um, a thousand square foot home or apartment that you're moving. Okay. It it helps a lot with the process. It's less stress for you. 
Now, all moving companies are not created equal. Absolutely. And there, there's going to be different charges, different costs, maybe mm-hmm. some different things included. Mm-hmm. Um, how should you factor that into your decision during a move? Definitely, you want to interview a moving company the same way a employer would interview an employee. You want to make sure that these moving companies um, are going to take care of the belongings that mean the most to you. Um, I know when we moved, we had a very large safe, and we also had a very delicate piano. Mm-hmm. So when we called these moving companies, Companies, we ask those questions. Do you have the staff? Do you have the insurance to cover these items? If something were to happen, you know, give me your insurance policy. Right. Tell me, tell me what your practice is with these items. And we ended up eliminating a few moving companies from the stack because of those special items that met. By asking those, by asking absolutely. those questions. Yep, absolutely. So we mentioned that summer is a busy time, <clears throat> and homes are selling on average pretty quick. Mm-hmm. How far out should folks be contacting a moving company if they know they're going to want to use one? You know, as the right. house is going on the market or... My recommendation for that is definitely to have these conversations with the moving companies at at the earliest moment. So again, if you know you're going to be moving in six months from now, you know you want to put your your house up on the market at that point, start calling the moving companies now to get those questions answered so that you have that information in front of you. You can narrow it down to two or three. So when the time comes, if one moving company isn't able to schedule you in, you have those other one or two to back um to fall back on. All righty. Well, we're talking with Lauren DeResi from REMAX Encore and Clarkson about some moving tips, that actual process of packing up your belongings and moving to the new house. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation and share some more ideas to help you plan for your move. So stay tuned for more of the REMAX Real Estate Insight Show coming up here on 760 WJR. to the REMAX Real Estate Insight Show, and we're talking about moving, the process of actually packing up your belongings, all of them, and getting them from your current home to your new home. What we've covered so far is that doing a thorough purge of your things before you move is extremely helpful. Do something like the keep, toss, donate, sell process to weed out as much of your unused or maybe no longer needed item before you not only pay to move them, but you physically have to deal with it. And you want to use a color coding system to label the boxes. Folks more easily can visualize things, but from a visual perspective, whether it's the moving company or friends and family, so make sure you're doing that and talk to the moving companies in advance. Get the details. What are the fees? Are they insured? Do they or did they have familiar moving big products like what you have? Get all of those details before you make a decision. I'm your host, Jeanette Schneider. Back with me is Lauren DeResi. She's an associate with Remax Encore in Clarkston. So before we even start to pack and load boxes, I always think it's a smart move to kind of gather the supplies you're going to need, whether it's packing tape, scissors, pens, labels, that type of thing. Have a kit I you know kind of take from room to room, which leads me to moving supplies themselves, boxes, packing peanuts, bubble wrap, whatever you want to call it. That all can get pretty darn expensive. And if you're looking at a house of any size, you need a lot of material. Do you have anything creative that you've seen people use to pack and move where you're not having to buy all those supplies? Absolutely. The same supplies come in um, in mind as what you just mentioned, but how to get them is where you get creative. All righty. So you can ask friends and family who um, maybe have recently moved or they helped a family member move, uh, downsize, whatnot. You can Go on to social media. You can ask your friends and family on social media. You can go on to the local swap pages and ask for moving boxes because a lot of times people don't think about someone else that could use them. Mm-hmm. They just put them out to the curb for recycling. So you can definitely post on that and they'll say, please come pick them up. And you know, then they don't have to worry their, about it. It solves their exactly. problem on the other end. Now that I've unpacked everything, what do I exactly. do with all these containers? The other, the other thing that is a wonderful tool um, that a lot of people think of is if you go to your local party store, liquor store, the boxes that they box up the liquor and wine bottles in are the perfect size and they're meant to hold weight. So you won't overpack them because they're so big. Mm-hmm. And if you just call and ask them when they get their shipments, they'll be more than happy to keep those boxes intact for you. Oh, and that's interesting. So like you said, for whether it's weight, like kitchen, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's glasses, plates, silver, books. they're weighty books or yeah, very, very weighty. So now you've got something that's meant to handle that type of weight and it's not going to give way right. as you're on your way. And you're not going to hurt your back because you're 
overpacking a really big box. A really big box. <laughs> that, yeah, meant for pillows, yeah, and you're trying, exactly. you're trying to put a bunch of other stuff in there. So we know that moving can be stressful for adults, um, even more stressful for kids. Absolutely. Um, do you have any advice for those moving with kids that can maybe help make it a little bit easier? Yes. The biggest, the number one thing is to always keep them involved. Keep them involved in every aspect of the process. You want to ask their opinion about a lot of questions that you may have. Make them feel like this is their move as well, not just for the adults. And when you get to the new house, have them unpack their things in the room. It may not be the way that you want it to be, but they'll be happy to unpack their own items, put them in their own room and that makes them feel more comfortable with the process that way. Well, and so get them involved, you know, which is which is a good tip. So let's talk about the other kids in a family, which are the furry kids, because a lot of folks have furry kids in a a, a family (laughs) and they get pick up on stress of the humans, you know, in the family. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm thinking movie day doors are being held Mm -hmm. open. All of a sudden Fido's running down the street. Now Mm -hmm. we've got a whole other thing. Any tips to help it go smoother when there's pets involved? Yes. Um, Either have them go to a friend's house on move day, um, someone they're familiar with, or you can just have them tied up somewhere outside of the home, but where they can still see you coming and going and that you're not leaving. Um, when it comes to getting to the new house, make sure that they have their favorite blanket, their favorite bed, toys, things that make them comfortable. Have them at the ready with your other items that you'll have at the ready as well so that that pet can just feel that security blanket, if you will, mm-hmm. when you get to the new place that they're not familiar with. Which leads us right into, you did a great job on this, first night in the new home. Yes. You recommend that that you kind of have an overnight bag. Yes. Why is this important and what do you recommend be in there? Moving day is absolutely one of the most chaotic days of your life. And so you want to make sure that ahead of time you're thinking about, okay, what would I pack if I were going on a weekend trip? Uh, make sure you have your toothpaste, all your toiletries, a few uh, pairs of clothing, um, any any books, any of your phone chargers, your computer chargers, anything that you're going to need at the ready. Put those all in one bag. And that also includes those pet supplies that we talked about just a minute ago. And prescriptions or anything yes. medical, medical related, absolutely. I'm guessing, too. Yep. And snacks because you never know where the food is. <laughs> and that's vitally important when you're stressed, yes. right? <laughs> so we're, we've been talking a lot about the actual like packing boxes mm-hmm. and physically moving, but as part of the moving process, there's also people you need to notify. Absolutely. Talk to us a little bit about what are some parties you need to keep in the loop and, and how should folks go about doing that? There's... Um, it- you really need to just keep everything written down the whole process but one of those things is create a who to notify list and good little pieces that you can work on and again not bef- not during the move but before the move write down who you who your utilities pay to who do you pay your cell phone to who is your internet and, and cable provider find out if they go to the new house you want to find all those those people that you deal with on a regular basis which includes um, your CPA if you have an attorney that you are in contact with make sure that everybody that you touch on a regular basis or semi-regular basis has that information that you're going to be moving and that you can let them know what the new address is. Right. Well, we're talking with Lauren Jerezzi from Remax Encore and Clarkson about how to make a move easier. So Lauren, what are some other things to keep in mind besides just moving the items from one place you know, to another? We focus a lot on that, but there, there's more to the process than that. There so what, what, what else do you have for us? The number one thing is to stay calm. Oh, that Everything. sounds that sounds harder to do than you're saying it is. <laughs> it's a stressful process. It's an emotional process. There's no doubt about that. And you can't get around that, but you can learn how to deal with it in a more calm way. So whenever you're feeling that anxiety start to rise up, just take a deep breath and know that you're not doing it alone. You do have your friends and family that are there to support you. Your agent, your realtor is there to support you. Um, it, it, stay calm. Keep a binder it keep it, it, it maybe it's a electronic format or it could be paper but keep a binder for all of your moving documents your agent's information your lender information any new information on the home that you're going to be moving into the moving company if you have business cards from any contractors that you've been working with, keep those all together in the same place. Any of your to-do lists that you come up with, keep it all in that one space that you know where it's going to be. And that will alleviate a lot of stress right there with all that pertinent information will be in one spot. I just, you just like you said, I have a place to go. And yes. if I'm all of a sudden have a question or I need to get a hold of somebody... I know right make it where a I'm. bright pink binder. Something, you know, and again, if it's electronic version, make sure right. it's very accessible to you. Otherwise, make it a bright color so you can see it. So you, let's say you do have friends and family because mm-hmm. you're saying you're not doing it alone. You've right. got people to help you. Yeah. They show up. Maybe the moving truck is now pulled away. Boxes are mm-hmm. all over the house. Better to go 
tackle one room at a time, or if you've got multiple people, let them divide and conquer. As far as unpacking, is there one method better than the other? Well, that's a big, it depends. It (laughs) depends on how much you have confidence in your friends and family to do (laughs) things the way that you want. It also depends. I come from a, you know, professional organizing background. So I know that I take calmness in unloading those things myself. So it really does depend on the family and on the situation. Mm -hmm. Um, And just make that decision at that moment. If they're there and they're saying, can I help you with anything? If you feel any sort of tinge to have them help, have them do it, whether it be the whole house at once or just one room at a time. Okay. And you say starting fresh, a new Mm home is kind of a fresh space, fresh palette, if you will, Mm -hmm. to develop some good habits. What's one good habit that folks can develop as they're moving into the new home? A fantastic habit that you can get into is creating a maintenance log for your home. More times than not, if you don't start this right off the bat, you're never going to start doing it. So keep track of when you change your furnace filter. What type of furnace filter do you use? Anytime you have a contractor come in to do any type of maintenance work or repair work, make sure you get their contact information, put it in one place, whether it be a binder, maybe a drawer in the laundry room or in the kitchen. Keep all those records in one spot so that you have it. And then also, if you do end up moving down the road, you have that information to rely to and also to provide to the next buyer. Sounds great. Well, thanks very much, Lauren DeResi, for sharing tips on how to make the actual moving process a little less stressful. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about pre-approvals, interest rate, employment history. All of these are part of the loan approval process. We're going to take a look at these as well as refinancing and what to know if you want to get a loan to buy a second or a vacation home. Stay tuned for more of the REMAX Real Estate Insight Show here on 760 WJR.